Greetings shipmates and shipheads, welcome to Straight Out the Coast Guard, your TCP port call for CG news, history, and benefits for members past, present, and future. If you haven't already, smartly press the subscribe button and remember the channel at your next pass down. Today, we deeply dive into the Shiz Show known as the Ocean Patrol Cutter Acquisition, a project that has been strife with controversy, delay, and a huge dose of big CG incompetence. If you had orders to an OPC, let us know where they sent you instead. The United States Coast Guard safeguards our nation's coastlines, protects our maritime interests, and enforces maritime law. They are our first line of defense against a wide array of threats, from drug trafficking to illegal immigration to terrorism. To carry out these critical missions, the Coast Guard relies on a fleet of ships and aircraft, including the aging medium endurance cutters. These vessels, some over 50 years old, are nearing the end of their service lives. They require increasingly frequent and expensive maintenance and they lack the capabilities needed to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Recognizing the urgent need to replace these aging cutters, the Coast Guard launched the Offshore Patrol Cutter OPC program. In 2016, the Coast Guard awarded the contract to design and build the first OPC to Eastern Shipbuilding Group, a shipyard in Panama City, Florida. The initial plan called for the construction of 25 OPCs, with the first vessel named the Argus scheduled for delivery in 2021. However, the OPC program has faced significant challenges and setbacks, resulting in substantial delays and cost overruns. Natural disasters, technical problems, and management issues have all plagued the program, raising concerns about its future. The story of the OPC program is one of ambition and adversity, of hope and frustration. It highlights the complexities of shipbuilding, the challenges of government procurement, and the importance of effective oversight and accountability. To understand the significance of the OPC program, one must first appreciate the aging fleet it aims to replace. The medium endurance cutters, the backbone of the Coast Guard's offshore presence, have served with distinction for decades. These vessels, many commissioned in the 1960s and 1970s, have patrolled our coastlines, interdicted drug smugglers, rescued countless mariners in distress, and enforced maritime law. However, time takes its toll on even the most robust ships. Corrosion, metal fatigue, and obsolete systems plague these aging vessels. Keeping them operational requires increasingly frequent and costly maintenance, straining the Coast Guard's budget and diverting resources from other critical missions. Recognizing the urgent need to replace its aging medium endurance cutters, the Coast Guard embarked on a multi-year effort to define its requirements for a new class of offshore patrol vessels. This process culminated in the early 2010s with the formal launch of the Offshore Patrol Cutter OPC program. The OPC was envisioned as a versatile platform, bridging the gap between smaller fast response cutters and larger national security cutters. The new cutters would need superior seakeeping abilities, advanced sensors, and command systems. In 2016, the Coast Guard awarded the contract to Eastern Shipbuilding Group, a family-owned shipyard in Panama City, Florida. Eastern Shipbuilding had limited experience with complex military shipbuilding. Their bid was significantly lower than competitors, a key factor in the decision. Some questioned their technical expertise and workforce capacity. Despite concerns, the Coast Guard expressed confidence in their ability to deliver on time and on budget. In October 2018, Hurricane Michael, a powerful Category 5 storm, slammed into the Florida Panhandle, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Panama City, home to Eastern Shipbuilding, bore the brunt of the storm's fury. The shipyard suffered catastrophic damage with buildings reduced to rubble and equipment tossed about like toys. The storm surge inundated the shipyard, flooding dry docks and damaging ships under construction. The Coast Guard granted Eastern Shipbuilding a contract extension and additional funding to help the shipyard recover. However, the impact of Hurricane Michael on the OPC program went far beyond physical damage, disrupting supply chains and scattering skilled workers. Even as Eastern Shipbuilding worked to recover from Hurricane Michael, technical challenges with the OPC's design and construction began to emerge. 
One of the most persistent problems involved the ship's shafting system, a critical component that transmits power from the engines to the propellers. The shafting system experienced repeated failures during testing, causing significant delays and raising concerns about the ship's overall reliability. Eastern Shipbuilding and its subcontractor embarked on a series of redesigns and modifications to address these issues, but the problems persisted. The shafting system debacle highlighted the challenges of integrating complex systems from multiple vendors. It also exposed weaknesses in the Coast Guard's oversight and contract management processes. One of the most controversial aspects of the OPC program has been the Coast Guard's decision to allow Eastern Shipbuilding to begin construction on subsequent ships. This practice, known as concurrency, is often employed to accelerate production and reduce costs. However, it carries risks as problems in the lead ship may need correction in subsequent builds, leading to delays and cost increases. By rushing ahead, the Coast Guard may have locked in design flaws, leading to greater delays and increased costs. The OPC program's challenges extended beyond Hurricane Michael and the shafting system. Numerous other technical issues and management failures plagued the program, contributing to delays and cost overruns. One such issue involved the ship's davit system, a crucial piece of equipment used to launch and recover small boats. The Coast Guard's own reports identified a pattern of oversight failures related to the davit system. The Coast Guard failed to adequately scrutinize the system's design, enforce contractual requirements for testing and inspection, and hold Eastern Shipbuilding accountable for the system's poor performance. These failures stemmed from a combination of factors, including a lack of technical expertise within the Coast Guard's acquisition workforce and inadequate staffing levels. The Coast Guard's decision to employ concurrency in the OPC program has drawn significant criticism. Concurrency in shipbuilding means beginning construction on subsequent vessels before fully resolving design and production issues with the lead ship. While intended to expedite production, this approach can backfire if problems in the lead ship necessitate costly and time-consuming retrofits on others. The unresolved issues with the Argus, particularly the troublesome shafting system, should have served as a red flag allowing construction on subsequent cutters to proceed before thoroughly addressing these issues was a gamble that, at least so far, appears to have backfired. By rushing ahead with concurrent construction, the Coast Guard may have locked in design flaws and production challenges, ultimately leading to greater delays and increased costs. Between 2018 and 2022, the Coast Guard issued eight letters of concern to Eastern Shipbuilding, flagging various issues with the OPC program. These letters, intended to alert the contractor to potential problems and demand corrective actions, appear to have largely fallen on deaf ears. One glaring example involves the davit system, a critical piece of equipment used to launch and recover small boats from the cutter. Despite repeated warnings from the Coast Guard about deficiencies in the system's design and performance, Eastern Shipbuilding failed to take adequate corrective measures. This failure to address concerns promptly raises serious questions about the contractor's commitment to quality control and its responsiveness to the Coast Guard's oversight. The Coast Guard as the customer has a responsibility to hold its contractors accountable for meeting contractual obligations and to enforce penalties when those obligations are not met. The litany of problems plaguing the OPC program points to a deeper issue, a failure to adequately identify and address the root causes of these problems. Rather than simply treating the symptoms, the Coast Guard and Eastern Shipbuilding should have invested more time and resources in understanding why these problems were occurring in the first place. A thorough root cause analysis would involve a systematic examination of the design process, the supply chain, the shipyard's workforce, and the Coast Guard's own oversight procedures. By identifying the underlying causes of delays, defects, and cost overruns, the Coast Guard could have taken steps to prevent these problems from recurring. This failure to conduct a comprehensive root cause analysis suggests a reactive rather than proactive approach to program management. The GAO report hints at a potential culture of complacency within both the Coast Guard and Eastern Shipbuilding. This complacency, perhaps stemming from a shared assumption that the program would eventually get back on track, 
may have led to a reluctance to make tough decisions and hold each other accountable. For the Coast Guard, this complacency manifested in a hesitancy to enforce contractual penalties against Eastern Shipbuilding, fearing that doing so would further delay the program. For Eastern Shipbuilding, it may have resulted in a tendency to downplay the seriousness of problems and overpromise on its ability to deliver. This perceived culture of complacency raises concerns about the long-term health of the OPC program. The contrast between Eastern Shipbuilding's struggles with the OPC program and its successes in the commercial sector is puzzling. How can a shipyard capable of delivering complex commercial vessels falter with a government contract? In May 2023, Eastern Shipbuilding celebrated the on-time, on-budget delivery of the RB Weeks, a massive dredge built for a commercial client. This vessel, designed for challenging offshore environments, was a significant technical accomplishment. If Eastern Shipbuilding could deliver the RB Weeks on time and on budget, why the difficulties with the OPC program? One key difference between commercial shipbuilding and government contracting lies in flexibility. Commercial contracts offer greater latitude in design modifications and construction methods. This allows shipyards to adapt to challenges and deliver a product that meets customer needs. Government contracts are more rigid, bound by strict regulations and oversight. These can stifle innovation and contribute to delays. Beyond the structural differences between commercial and government contracts, some observers point to a potential difference in motivation. Commercial contracts incentivize shipyards to deliver on time and on budget. A reputation for reliability secures future contracts. Government contracts, while profitable, may not provide the same level of financial incentive. Penalties for delays exist, but may not offset potential profits from extensions. Delays can be attributed to factors beyond control. Different incentive structures may influence decision-making. The stark contrast between Eastern Shipbuilding's commercial successes and its struggles with the OPC program highlights the need for a more nuanced understanding of the challenges inherent in government shipbuilding. While rigorous oversight and accountability are essential, excessive bureaucracy, inflexible contracts and misaligned incentives can stifle innovation, undermine efficiency, and ultimately harm the very programs they are intended to protect. The Coast Guard, in its oversight role, must strike a delicate balance between ensuring accountability and fostering an environment where shipyards can innovate, adapt, and deliver complex vessels on time and on budget. This requires streamlining oversight procedures, empowering program managers to make timely decisions, and aligning incentives to reward efficiency and innovation. The GAO report makes clear that the Coast Guard must take a more proactive role in overseeing the OPC program. This begins with strengthening the Coast Guard's acquisition workforce. Invest in recruiting, training, and retaining personnel with technical expertise. Include specialized training in shipbuilding and contract management. Assign experienced personnel to key oversight roles. Section 2. Rethinking Concurrency The challenges experienced in the OPC program should prompt the Coast Guard to reconsider its approach to concurrency in shipbuilding. While concurrency can theoretically accelerate production, as we've seen, it can also magnify problems and lead to greater delays and cost overruns if not managed carefully. The Coast Guard should adopt a more cautious approach to concurrency, limiting its use to situations where the design is mature, the risks are well understood, and the contractor has a proven track record of performance. Before authorizing concurrency, the Coast Guard should conduct a thorough risk assessment, weighing the potential benefits against the potential downsides. In cases where concurrency is deemed necessary, the Coast Guard should establish stringent oversight mechanisms to closely monitor progress, identify problems early, and ensure that corrective actions are taken promptly and effectively. Incentivizing Performance The Coast Guard should structure its shipbuilding contracts to better incentivize timely and efficient performance. This includes moving away from a culture of contract extensions and change orders, which can create perverse incentives for contractors to delay projects or inflate costs. The Coast Guard should establish clear performance-based incentives that reward contractors for meeting key milestones on time and on budget. These incentives could include financial bonuses, favorable consideration for future contracts, or other forms of recognition. Conversely, 
the Coast Guard should not shy away from imposing penalties for delays or cost overruns that are attributable to contractor negligence or poor performance. These penalties could include financial withholdings, contract terminations, or damage to the contractor's reputation. What do you think made the chalks fall off? Did all the sexual assault drama at the Academy screw up the pipeline of qualified members for these projects? Does the Coast Guard lack the oversight it needs to cull its legacy bad players? Thank you for watching. Let us know. Will the OPC ever come?